Hello everyone and welcome to the Super Rugby Podcast with your host Damien Warren and Toby Harris. Now Toby, we, uh, we, we you put out there, you wanted to put some polls out at the, uh, at the last week's podcast and what were those two polls you wanted to put out? Well, the first one was who should introduce the Super Rugby Podcast um, and then the second one was uh, Percy Montgomery and, and Andre Joubert. So Percy Montgomery was my pick and... Andre Joubert, Joubert was, was my mate. Pick. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Um, Should we so go with the I first won, poll for I a start? I won both. I won both. <laughs> <laughs> I very nervously put out that first poll, I might add, and and I only just snipped it. Um, so I'm very glad, and hence why I started the show. But Percy Montgomery and Andre Joubert, it was a tie. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and put that out right during the match of a couple of South African matches and we'll try and get a real South African <laughs> vote going on there. Uh, because it's a shame to think 50-50, no. mate. We've got to have a winner, no, don't we? I we can't have them both playing. Well, one could come on at half time. <laughs> <laughs> mate, first up, we've got our questions, though, for this week. Yes. Do you want to go through the first one? Yes, our times? first question is from Ags with a Z. That's Twitter. That's from Twitter. From, that's from the Twitter. From the Twitter. Yeah, from the Twitter. And he says, or she. I think it's a she. I think it's a she, she. yeah. Oh, yeah. But we'll go with a she, yeah. <laughs> she likes to look at you, doesn't she? Um, the Hurricanes get penalised a lot in the scrums. It looks like Tumanga Allen is the one always getting pinged. What is he doing wrong? And I don't understand why he's still starting the game when he's the most penalised. Uh, it's a very, very interesting question. And to be absolutely honest, the only people that will know what is truly going on there yeah. is the two props oh, going against sure. each other. For sure. So you've got the old tight head whose job is to remain straight yeah. and be the cornerstone of that scrum. And then you've got your loose head whose job it is to niggle, niggle mm. to try and lift that tight head yeah. up off the ground. And we saw that in the Crusaders match where... Um, Harry Allen got lifted right off the ground and got penalised for it, which I thought was quite interesting and strange. And that just showed, I'm not sure whether the referees really know what they're doing. But that also shows the amount of energy and power going through those scrums. Oh, absolutely. You know, you know 100 plus easy player just getting lifted, lifted off the ground. Like yeah. a sack of spuds. <laughs> <laughs> sack of spuds aren't bloody light either, are they? <laughs> Yeah, so, so to answer your question, Tumanga Allen might be getting penalised more, yeah. but he might not actually be doing anything wrong. I think sometimes the referees flip a coin, and depending on what day of the month it is, yeah. um, they'll just sort of no, go, well, I think it's you. The, the big thing I think they are cracking down on is staying square. Staying straight. So, staying yeah. straight. They don't seem to use their touchies very well for that. You know, they seem to just penalise people on their side. Or even when the you know when they go down on the far side, oh, they've gone down. We'll reset. We'll just reset. Rather than and saying to the old uh, touchy, can you make can you make sure they're square, mate? Yeah, can you make also, sure they're square? You know, this week has been such a pain for scrums. Every week scrum, has been a pain and for I've scrums. And I've gone on about it, haven't you? I? Have mate? You, like a you've sounded dog. like me. Going on about Just stuff. Just bloody whinging. <laughs> but honestly, it's frustrating me. It ruins, it's starting to ruin a game. Oh, it, it's, no, I think actually you've mentioned about Scrum. I thought this week the the quality of the games has been the best it has been well, for a long, long time. Good, but still the Scrums have just been a hassle. Yeah, well, you know, uh, unfortunately until they change the rules or until the referees get up with the rules. Yeah. We're going to have the the problem of reset scrum after reset scrum. I think the better quality the ref, the less reset scrums yeah, you have. True, but also is, we got second part of that question. Why is he still starting? They've got they've got no one else, mate. That they they've they really don't have. I mean, Tumung Tum- Tum- Allen is is a good. Uh, prop. I tell you what, he's he's a great prop around the pitch. He does a lot of work. Yeah, and, and he's Gets not bad. Ruck. He's I a mean, good you, ball handler. He passes the ball nicely, but he just seems to be getting pinned. But I think what we'll find is is that you look at the 
Hurricanes scrum, and actually they are pretty good. Yeah. So, you know, they haven't had a huge amount of issues in there. I think a lot of New Zealand teams are just getting penalised a lot. Yeah. Maybe that's down to the fact that they, coaching, you know, it doesn't seem to be a big thing to give away penalties. You know, it's actually no. deemed to be okay to give away penalties. Well, it depends where you give them away. Yeah. You know, if you give them away in, in their half, then they've got to kick for touch and hopefully win the line out. Yeah. And line outs are so unpredictable at the moment as well. You know, you're getting the opposition jumping up and winning it easily or overthrowing or not straight. There's a lot of that going on at the moment. There's a lot of basic errors in set piece yeah. going down. Yeah. But next question. Yes. Is from James, a Kiwi stuck living in Melbourne. He's oh. put that himself. Good luck, pal. <laughs> So, Tobes, he's put down here, firstly, really enjoy your podcast. Insightful and a great listen. <laughs> Is he okay? <laughs> Is he listening to the same one that we're... He's living in Melbourne, mate, yeah. so, uh, yeah. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, you spoke about Scott Robinson, how good a coach he is. I also think he's a good coach, but I'm not sold on the idea that he's as good as everyone thinks. This isn't just him, but most past Crusader coaches... Crusaders have always had great players to choose from. Make it easier for the coach. So is it, basically what he's getting to is, is it that it's the Crusader franchise or is it the coach? I think it's a mixture. I think they've got a great pool of players to pick from. And they do a fantastic job in recruiting, I think, from other franchises. Civil Reese, the main one at the moment. But then also, I think Scott Robinson's good. They've had some good coaches in the past. And it just, everything seems to sort of interlink or fit in like a cog. I was really lucky enough to be part of when he was still playing. He did yeah. some coaching as well. Um, and I got to be part of, of some of that coaching that took place. And even then, he was inspirational, yeah. thought-provoking, and it, the big thing that he gave was energetic. Now, there has been some things that I've seen this year that has made me scratch my head a little bit, the weekend's game being a good example of that. But some of the things that he does or has done is out of this world. For example, some people might not know this, but he has a theme for each year, okay? Okay. So when they won the title in 2017, yeah. his theme was Muhammad Ali, Rumble in the Jungle. Now, the story, background story to that, Muhammad Ali, you know, went to war, or didn't, sorry, didn't want to go to war, um, abstained from that. He went nine years without winning a title. He, he lost two titles in that process, just like the Crusaders had won, yeah. lost two finals. Hadn't won for nine years. And he won that title after nine years in the Rumble of the Jungle. Where did the Crusaders win the title? They won the title in the jungle in South Africa. Africa yeah. So he he has a, a, a knack of inspiring his players. He is also, details, fantastic. Is he a top, top coach? I would say absolutely top, top coach. Is he as good as everyone makes out? We don't know. We have no idea. No. He, he, everything looks like it. You know, a guy that came, they haven't won a title in nine years. He takes them to winning two in a row. He's now looking like it could be three in a, three row. In a row. He has a knack of picking players that have been not wanted from their own franchises. And making them into good players. And making them great players. So you've got to say that he is as good as everyone's saying. Mm. We, But... But, here's a big but, there, were, there are things that I've seen this year that make me scratch my head why are players making that decision. But I do think that possibly players are making that decision because he's allowing players to make that decision. Yeah. You he's, know, he, he's, he's giving them the sort of the, responsibility. The yeah. So when push comes to shove, they're making the calls. Yeah. yeah. And in pressure situations, they'll make the calls because they've made the right calls more often than not. not yeah. Whereas others might be starting... To, now, a great, great example of that was Stormers on the weekend 
at times the coach was sending out the kicking tee saying, right, I want you to go. take a kick. Yeah. And at the end of the match, the coach was like, go for the corner. Yeah. And Khaleesi went, no, 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 I want to take the points. And I don't know how I felt about it. We're going to go over about that later. But So is he as good as people are saying? I think you've got to say yes at the moment. Yeah, definitely. N- nothing else is saying anything other than that. Everything that comes out, players, press, other coaching staff. I mean, Ronan Nagara, yeah. he says it's just different level. He, he likens the coaching staff there to like a Formula One pit crew. They are all just working perfectly in, in sync, sync yeah. to get the best result for their team. God, mate, you must be out of breath. You've been talking so much. As always. <laughs> so As we've always. actually got our uh, third listener's question, but it's actually a voice recording, isn't it, David? It is, mate, and it's a really good one. But I'm going to give you the power, Tobes. To press the button. So all you have to do is press button number three there, Tobes. Can you press that? Number Can you three. manage that, mate? I've got to try and reach it first, big fella. There you go. Hi, lads. Absolutely loving the podcast. Keep up the good work. With the London Sevens just around the corner, I'd like to know what your ultimate Sevens team would be if it was made up of current Super 15 rugby players. And I want to know if you think that team would win if it was to enter London next weekend. Because there's always been a perception that Sevens players are those who weren't quite good enough for the 15s game. I want to know if you think that's true. Look forward to the answer. Keep up the good work, Russ. Well, thank you, Russell. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to say it's Russell. He says Russ. So, very, very interesting question. Yeah. Have you have you written down some names of players? No, you haven't, have you? <laughs> Why doesn't that I surprise me? i got them locked me? up here, mate. Locked up here. So I, I've got I've tried to think about trying to win the competition. Okay. Now I think that's an incredibly tough task to win the competition because although sevens is still rugby, it's like a different game. You need a different skill set. Oh, definitely. Yeah. To do really really well. So I'm trying to pick a team that, and I'm also trying to pick a team from around the Super Rugby franchises as okay. well. So stick with me on this. Speckman, Deerlande and Quagga Smith, or Quagga Smith. I'm sorry if I mispronounced that. Now, I've picked those three from South Africa, and I've picked them for good reasons. Speckman and Quagga Smith have played in the Sevens. They have, haven't They've they? been Blitzbox yeah. before. Yeah. Also, Speckman is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> he is, isn't he? Deolande is just raw pace, power, yeah. everything you love about a Sevens player. But I think all of those three would go into the dark places you need to go as a sevens player. Yeah. yeah. So it's always good to, you know, you could say someone like, you know, Jonah Lomu was a great sevens player. He but, was. But not maybe in the modern sevens. No, not modern, no. But tell you who another good one would be is Savia. Well, I've got him, yeah, I've got him go. on my New he Zealand. Was in, he was in the setup for the, uh, the last Olympics, wasn't he? Was he? he? Yes, he was, yeah. <laughs> Okay, I'll take you. He was, yeah. I know yeah. Sonny Bill was there, yeah, wasn't Sonny he? Bill he made the and move across. Ardi Savia. And um, Messam. Messam tried, but I don't yeah, think Messam. he made the, no. the final thing. So I've gone for the New Zealand sort of area. I've gone Rico Ioani. 100%. He was, that's where he first came up as yeah. maybe like an 18 year old, 17 yeah. year old. I've gone his brother as well. Oh, he was also in there. He was, yeah. Sevilla. <laughs> there you go. Bowden Barrett, just because you've got yeah. to have Bowden Barrett. Don't you? Pace. Pace. It got good, good tackle. game. Good tackle. Oh, yeah, okay. Ben Smith. Yeah. Because you've got, Always. you know, he'd just run for you forever. <laughs> ben Lamb, because he's been part of that group he as well. He has been, hasn't he? Okay. Yeah. And Nanai. Oh, Milani Nanai you from the Blues. Him, and I'm going to have him because he. you watch him play, he is all over that place. He, he's, he look, he's got a good engine. But secondly, he's your stepper. Yeah. And you need your stepper good in there. Good foot. What about Severice? I did think about I, Severice. I I, I, I'm tell not you what, sure he's going to have the engine you need. He doesn't have the engine. Yeah, he doesn't have that stamina, does he? No, I don't. I don't think so. But what about Australia? Who who do you think for Australia? Curtly Beal. Why didn't pick Curly Beal actually? Mm. Now you mentioned Curly yeah. Beal, I'm I'm starting to think Curly Beal was a good shout. Uh, what about Falau? I've definitely. Oh, well, we now just for all those people who haven't listened all the way back, we don't say falau, we say falawa. <laughs> falawa. <laughs> um, I've gone falawa. Yeah. yeah. I've gone Quade Cooper 
Yes. Kind of a throwback. He's, got a, well, he's also got a very good step. He's got a great step, yeah. Well, he had a better step maybe a few years ago. What What about Will Genia or Aaron Smith? I've gone Will Genia over Aaron Smith. Aaron Smith, Huge. great passer, not as good a runner. Will Genia, just different class. Really? You're not happy about that, but it's true. I'm, I'm not, not happy. I'm just interested, surprised. So we've done Australia. Yep. We've done South Africa and we've done New Zealand. Now we're about to do the Japanese and the uh, Argentinians. Uh, the Argies. So I've gone Matera. Yep. Right. And Buffali. Oh. Yeah. Buffali. He's just like a loose cannon. You know, you just chuck him <laughs> on and he's going to do something <laughs> ridiculous. Someone. What about the wingers? They're rapid. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's why I put Buffali in yeah. because he, although he plays at fullback. He is he is special. Yeah. He's a special player. Yeah. Now, the Japanese know players, but Tony Brown is the coach. <laughs> so what, what, do we think they could go and win the competition, uh, the London Sevens? I think they would have a really good go. But I think because, because that seven circuit, they're playing and training week in, week out. They're playing maybe once or twice a month, that sort of thing. They get to know each other like the back of their hands. Yeah, I would say, I think this... It's almost te- like the Barbarians. Yeah, I think this team, if you put them into the final, yeah. could win it, a one-off game. Yeah. But I'm not sure, put them into a competition, they've and got they to could play... could five or six games on the trot. Yeah, and, and you know, that you've got to, your body just would not be used to it. So, I'm going to say they couldn't win the London Sevens if they just entered tomorrow but if you gave them a month of training together what about a season oh definitely they could easily win do you it think with so it. Oh, easy easy there's no no question <laughs> that that team good coach together all the time going yeah. through easy all no right. problems gee confident yeah very confident mate you know me <laughs> <laughs> so but great question uh russ and um he was from london as well Oh, Russ was from London. Ooh. And the last question... Oh, that was the last question. That was the last question. <laughs> Come on, with the play. That is the last question. So up next, we are going to review, and, well, we're going to review for a start, all the weekend's matches and what some rugby we have t- yeah. we've seen this weekend. Yeah, it's been good. And we're going to preview. After that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>